Welcome back. Yesterday we told you about the armed Antifa that showed up at the kid-friendly drag show that took place in Roanoke, Texas recently. At the drag show, armed conservative activists and members of the Proud Boys faced off against armed Antifa members, is what the New York Post is saying. The standoff between the two groups didn't escalate to violence, and police acted as peacekeepers while they watched the two groups confront each other. This is the world we live in, guys, where now people are actually bringing guns to protect these events. It's, it's the clown world. And even though the owner of the restaurant where the drag show was, was held, they said there'd be no sexual contact whatsoever, foul language, or even erotic behavior. But uh, Protect Trans Kids, a nonprofit founded by an anti-trans activist named Kelly Niedert uh, to protect kids from the toxic trans agenda, was unconvinced these things wouldn't be happening. The nonprofit urged supporters to show up at the show, and this is what led to the two groups having the arm standoff. And while it's surprising the situation didn't escalate to the violence, because you know, that's what this is, guys, it's violent. You have people on multiple antidepressants going insane for the Ukraine, and these leftist groups, they want a left-wing version of Kyle Rittenhouse. And our next guest, unfortunately, has personally had a violent interaction and been attacked by these Antifa. Last year, Andy No published a book exposing Antifa shortly after he published this book. He was beaten and chased by the militant group while he was covering ongoing protests in Portland, Oregon. And this wasn't the first time Andy has been attacked by Antifa either. He's like their number one target. They hate this guy. The Antifa members went on to vandalize buildings and spray painted murder Andy No and kill Andy No. It was scary enough. And now we have the legendary author, journalist, and one of Antifa's biggest threats of physical violence, the one, the only Andy Now, How are you doing, Andy? I'm okay. Thank you for having me on, Alex. Well, have things calmed down? Because I know when you first got attacked, that was a big deal. But are you still living fear or are you putting yourself less out there? Because I'm telling you, I go to these events, I'm now starting to get more nervous that I, that I might get attacked. And you have a much bigger following than me, so I'm sure you're an even much bigger target than I am. Uh, in Portland, it is not safe for myself or any journalist actually to document the criminal activities that take place uh, involving far left militants in the public, uh, whether it be myself or numerous other journalists, both independent and establishment and legacy media have been attacked, beaten and or robbed. Um, I'm just... I think I've become a lightning rod as a target for Antifa because I've been um, relentless in continuing in this beat and unmasking them uh, through public records and their arrest records and their names and photos and past names. And for them, that is unforgivable because they operate um, by making the public believe that they are not actually organized when in fact they very much are. Was that what they're hiding, Andy, the organization aspect? Because I know that that was a big deal. Kelly neared it. A lot of these people that were in North Texas, these counter protesters, they show up to the same events. People not realize, you know, it's like you'll see the same people. You know, maybe there's new people, but there's. So when you talk about the organization, like I've gone to just a few events and I'm like had the same interactions with the same Antifa. But when Kelly found the pictures and connected them with their real names and their, you know, their faceless pictures, however she found them they started to not go to the events. They started to show. So why is it such a big deal to unmask them? Because I don't imagine these guys have corporate America gigs. So why is that, why is that the issue with the unmasking such a big deal? Well, part of their MO is to deceive and make the public think that Antifa means just anti-fascism and that if you if anybody is against fascism, that they're part of the movement. And they do that so that well, for one, law enforcement don't pursue conspiracy charges against them when they happen to get arrested. But it's part of a larger propaganda. Uh, and it's also to get buy-in from the mainstream left. We've seen a number of campaigns from Democrat-linked um, activists online who will use the hashtag I am Antifa. And whenever I hear those words, it's actually quite chilling and disturbing because those were the words used by the Antifa gunman in Portland in 2020 when he shot dead a Trump supporter. He left behind a manifesto, and part of that quote that he used was, I am 100% Antifa. So the fact that that line is being appropriated by mainstream Democrats should disturb all of us, actually.
Yeah, and I see that. I mean, I don't even want to talk about the, the you know, scallywag journalists that are in uh, my neck of the woods, Dallas, that, you know, talk bad about this. But, but I, you know, you can see on their Twitter, the groups they follow, it's very organized. It's socialists of, Al, you know, uh, Allen, Texas. I mean, every little city, I'm trying to use like a small suburb of Dallas, they all have their own like fascistic logo, you know, sometimes it's a rainbow flag. So you can almost find their networks on Twitter. Do you ever expose those, those networks? I mean, are those, my point is, are those people LARPing or do you think they really are organized to kind of hurt people? Because there's so much of them on Twitter. I mean, there's everywhere. Fascists, socialists, socialists of Arizona. It's so easy to find them. Uh, there are both aspects. There are those who are LARPing, those who just see a digital flyer on social media and show up wearing a mask. And then there are those who actually attend meetings and have a close inner circle of those who are vetted members. And all of that is done behind closed doors so that the public isn't aware that the crimes are actually organized. And regarding what happened in Texas recently, North Texas, outside the uh, children's uh, drag queen event, I think um, the fact that you are seeing more and more Antifa now openly carry rifles and firearms and also stage some of their members in strategic positions in the areas to be snipers, um, I mean, it's showing a level of coordination beyond what we've seen previously um, uh, in Texas, for example, or other so-called red conservative areas. I think people need to wake up to the threat that there are those who have the means to carry out deadly violence. And actually, if you look at their rhetoric on these various social media accounts, as you have just uh, alluded to, uh, they call for violence and they call for actually killing their political opponents. No, you're, you're exactly right. And I say this and I said it on the walkout, but I do believe they see the massive support for Kyle Rittenhouse. The left wants their version of a Kyle Rittenhouse. So do you think that's true? Do you think they want the mortar, you know, to shoot the guy in the MAGA hat, but get away with it? You know, I think that's what the thing that separated Kyle Rittenhouse from any other homicide is the fact it was almost as, you know, polarizing as OJ Simpson getting off uh, for, you know, all these people have kind of idolized him on the right. So do you think that they want their version of Kyle Rittenhouse? Well, in a way, Antifa kind of do have their own version, except that he uh, was killed by law enforcement. I'm referring to Michael Reinald. That's the Antifa gunman I talked about a moment ago, who, after killing a Trump supporter, uh, fled out of state and was killed by a federal task force. Uh, now, every year, Antifa hold a uh, memorial-like events oh, yeah. uh, in honor of this um, murderer, this killer. So they don't hide the fact that they idolize uh, murderers and killers, actually. They, it's part of their ideology that their political opponents should be killed. So when one of their members does carry out a murder, that's celebrated. That's evil, disgusting. You know, I'm a conflict interventionist. I would never want to murder anybody. Well, Andy, it's a pleasure to have you on. It's an honor. I know you're doing great work. Continue to do that. I know the threats are scary. I get threats, but uh, I guess that's just the life we chose. You know what I mean? It's just a sad, harsh reality. That, but we can't live in fear. I know. I'm sure you don't live in fear either. And we can, fi we can find your book. We can find all your information. Please go support Andy. No, go follow him. It's an independent journalist. I know you're one of the head guys of the Post Millennial, but it's still hard. You know what I mean? It's still hard to be on a grind. Stuff inflation. So go support the guys doing good work like Andy. Thank you, Andy. My pleasure.